Good afternoon, Tigers, and welcome to this edition of BHSN. I'm Azaria Pangallo. And I'm Olivia Moorhart. And this is what's going on at the Wood. This election has been like no other. Cities like Washington, D.C. and New York City went so far as to board up their downtown areas in order to protect their residents and businesses as they are terrified of protesters taking the streets. We are filming this before we know exactly who won. However, the information we have currently has Joe Biden taking the lead with Donald Trump not so far behind. With Thanksgiving break just about here, students are getting excited to have some time off of school to visit family and friends, but with COVID, it might be a little difficult to do so. Due to COVID-19 restrictions, several of our local restaurants have decided to decrease their maximum capacity and start takeout. So let's take a closer look at how these restaurants are staying afloat during the Thanksgiving time. We go to reporter Sarah Sizemore to get the scoop on the restaurants providing Thanksgiving carryout. <laughs> Hello Tigers, I'm Sarah Sizemore bringing your regular dose of Beachwood Bites. Due to COVID-19 restrictions, several of our local restaurants have had to decrease their maximum capacity and start takeout. So let's take a closer look at how these restaurants are staying afloat during the Thanksgiving time. I got the chance to sit down with the owner of Bill Street to discuss more of how they are dealing with COVID-19. How has COVID-19 changed your restaurant? Um, I think that we've had to adapt to everybody's fears and everybody's comfortability. And we've had to spread out our seating. We have expanded. We have a 20 by 20 tent because we can get some extra seating in. Trying to make sure that we be aware of the safety of our employees and the safety of our guests. So with your takeout process, have you experienced more takeouts? Yes, I think that, you know, we, we have, um, you know, I was built, I was ahead of the game a little bit. I was always geared toward carry out curbside delivery and catering. We've already done a trail and error on correct carry out boxes and um, on how to make sure that everything is put together. I mean, we doubled our business. I think when COVID shut down and we just had carry out, we were able to sustain our business. Um, but also now, I think that with the colder weather coming in, we, people know that we have a good product and we're safe. I would probably say I'm about 40% over what I've done last year on top of my normal business from Carrier. That's great. Do you do anything special for the Thanksgiving time? We do. We offer, um, we offer catered meal, which is on our website, and then we have a package of prepared meals to go, whether you can do like uh, whether it's just two people or I do larger parties up to uh, 30 or 40 people, but we have custom, custom items. Now that's a wrap for your Beachwood Bites. Back to you, Olivia. Thanksgiving is a great time for relaxation, though every year the month of November can be extremely stressful for seniors applying to college. For the class of 2021, that stress has been amplified, as the college application process has become even more complicated. What does test optional mean, and how does that tie in with the idea of a more holistic approach to applications? Our counselors, Ms. Lonneman and Mr. Brinkman, tackle these questions and more in their interviews with Autumn Boone. Hey Tigers, my name's Autumn Boone, and I reached out to four counselors to ask them some questions about the college application process. Let's take a look. For early action, you are not required to attend the school if you apply and get accepted. Um, it is simply you are applying early, you're acting early to get to maybe to take advantage of these scholarship opportunities or simply just to get an answer earlier. Rolling admissions, um, you know, sometimes our state schools, um, it, they just don't have a firm deadline. So that means like you could really apply and be accepted even all the way into the summer. If you're using Common App, you need to make sure that you have matched and signed the FERPA release for your Common App, and that means match it with Naviance. It's a very easy process. The button is right there in the banner when you log in, but again, Ms. Lonneman or I can help you with that. In Naviance, those are the main things to make sure you're doing. Um, if you need a letter of recommendation, make sure you don't ask for more than you need, and make sure that teacher is invited through Naviance as well. So for the general admissions essay, that allows you to tell us a little bit more about yourself. For that essay, my biggest advice is to make sure to have a second pair of eyes look over it before you submit. 
for our scholarship essays, the, there's one competitive scholarship essay that is on the application. So if you are uh, applying for competitive scholarships, you will write that one essay. That is definitely a critical thinking essay. So we really want to see creativity. We want to see how you can really explain your positions. For our William C. Parker Diversity Scholarship, that essay is also listed. And just think about if you're interested in applying for that, how you believe you could contribute to that uh, diverse culture at the University of Kentucky. The college admission process is very different this year. It's, it's really, a, it's, you know, using the word unprecedented uh, is, is probably the most overused word right now, but it's, but it's really accurate. Uh, with, with almost every school going test optional, it's, it's changed how colleges even review applications. The truth is, I don't even think they know what they're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Test optional might, it might just stay. Don't tell Ms. Rash. <laughs> Now, I don't think testing will ever go away completely, but, but who knows for the next year, things are already moving along where, where schools who thought they would do it for one year may continue to do it for, for more years. Thank you to Ms. Lonneman, Mr. Brinkman, Mr. Abernathy, and Mr. Reeves for giving us some clarity. Back to you, Olivia. While the current seniors may be finishing up their college application, let's take a look into what some Beachwood alumni are doing now. Andrew Harris, who graduated in 2019, started Word, Word on the Wood with John Willis, also a class of 2019. Word on the Wood, as you probably know, reported on important news and special events at Beachwood. After graduating, Andrew and John passed it down to Matt McBee and Sean Leonard, who continued it until graduation last year. Now that we've had that short recap, let's check in with these three and see what they've been doing since they've left. We just wanted to touch on Word on the Wood, since we kind of grew out of that, this class kind of grew yeah. out of that. So why did you start Word on the Wood? Um, I was, it was the opening of the Idea Lab at Beachwood, and uh, Mr. Kaiser and Ms. Schobel, was just, they were just walking around the senior class showing us all about what was going on in there and stuff, because we had seen it getting built that summer, and you know, um, so everyone was really interested, like what's going on, you know, engineering part where the tools and the 3d printing and the laser etches and all that cool stuff. And I just saw this room and I, I knew there was a closet in the other room. And I asked him like, well, what's that? And he was, he was like, oh, well, we're, we're hoping to get some sort of, uh, video thing going saying, oh, well, we wanted to do a, a school newscast or, or, or some sort of school show. Um, and that really interested me. I don't know why, um, but I wanted to do something like that. Um, and so I went for it. For your helpful insight and a little taste of what it was like to be on Word at the Wood. Back at you, Olivia Nazario. We are so excited to tell you about a new addition to the Beachwood campus this year. What was once a few rolling carts is now our very own Tiger Zone store. Located right outside the Varsity Gym, the new spot houses a wide range of Beachwood apparel from sweatshirts to car magnets. We encourage everyone to hop on over and check it out. Now let's head to reporter Ava Layton to get the inside word on the Tiger Zone. We're sitting here with the director of the Tiger Zone, Carrie Berger, here to ask a few questions. Yeah. So how did the idea of the Tiger Zone originate? Um, the Tiger Zone has been around for many, many decades. Um, I came on board in 2017, and it was kind of always the idea of like, we'd love to have a permanent space aside from working out of storage areas. Um, and the administration decided at some point last year that they were gonna go through with finding us a permanent home. It's really, yeah. Obviously you have a lot of apparel in here. Mm -hmm. So what is your best selling and latest apparel? Um, we have uh, the vintage tiger shirt up there. Um, mm -hmm which has been really popular with young kids as well as adults. We have a red sweatshirt uh, right behind you. It's like a lightning. And then there's a white VHS sweatshirt that uh, has been popular with the ladies. Cool. Um, where do your sale profits go? 100% um, of our profits go to the athletic programs here. So, um, yeah, we support esports, cheerleading, bowling, archery, football, basketball, every, every athletic 
Speaking of big announcements, the school musical this year is The Sound of Music, directed by Miss Ross and Miss Amanda Borgers, who's our new director this year and comes from the Cincinnati scene. That's all I have for you today. Back to you, Nazario and Olivia. <laughs> With Thanksgiving break right around the corner, many people are getting their travel itineraries together. Although, we all must keep in mind that the rules regarding COVID-19 are still in place. All states are having to adapt quickly with their regulations as COVID reaches new heights. So whether you're planning to go on family vacation or just travel to another state in general, it is advised that you are aware of the restrictions within that state. The following places currently have specific regulations for travels that may include being tested upon arrival, quarantining for 15 days, or filling out certain travel or help forms. Alaska, Connecticut, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois, Kansas, Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, Rhode Island, Vermont, and Washington all have these restrictions. Wow, that sure is a lot to keep track of. That's for sure. Before you set off, make sure you are well off. It is an important motto to be living by right now. Now, let's bring back a more positive note as we head to Nick and James for an update on what the Beach of Jazz Ensemble is up to. <laughs> The band program is hosting a combined jazz ensemble for all skill levels. The combined jazz ensemble started on November 17th and will continue throughout the rest of the semester, rehearsing on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 3.30 to 5 after school. It will then split into the jazz lab band and jazz ensemble next semester. The jazz ensemble is looking for piano, guitar, and bass players. If you have any interest at all, stop by the band room next Tuesday and Thursday to get a little taste of jazz. Now enjoy a little clip of the 2018... Thanks guys, this weekend sure looks good for that jazz ensemble. We head over to Bray for your weekend for Hello Tigers, for your weekend forecast we have somewhat of a wet weekend. For Friday the 13th we have a high of 56 and a low of 46, so make sure you get outside and play with your younger siblings or neighbors. Moving on to Saturday we have a high of 58 and a low of 47, with showers coming from the south. So make sure you stay in and have a cozy morning. Finishing the weekend out with Sunday, we have a high of 59 and a low of 44 with some AM showers. Perfect for brunch with Grandma. Well, that's a wrap for your weekend forecast. Back to you guys. Thanks, Bree. Good thing I'm planning on staying indoor this weekend. However, with all our Tiger sports going on, some of you might not be. We toss it over to Trevor for your sports update. <laughs> Hello, Tiger fans. The playoffs are officially here and our football team is looking better than ever. After a 45 to nothing victory over NCC last Friday night, Mead County will not play a team who's located in the red. We are looking forward to a bye week and relieved to have a break from dominating the rest of the competition. Here Liam, Randy Moss McCormick for his highlight touchdown catch that left fans speechless. But Monty Hughes also gets into the end zone, scoring his first ever varsity touchdown. Potential Kentucky Mr. Football, aka Cameron Hergett, goes 14 for 14 with 215 passing yards and three touchdowns. The Tigers will take on Holy Cross next Friday night in the first round of district play. Now, I know Halloween may be over, but the Tigers are still looking scary. Speaking of outstanding teams, both our boys and girls cross-country squads ran like the wind at last week's state meet. The girls ended up finishing eighth in the state, and the boys came in at third. Senior Nat Neal Weld Michael was our top overall runner and finished 15th place overall. Congratulations to both teams, and thank you to all the cross-country seniors for an unforgettable year. Every real athlete knows just how important it is to keep your body in tip-top shape, not just for the personal development, but for the sweet physique too. One guy that knows a lot about personal athletic development and sweet physique 
is Beachwood's very own new strength and conditioning coach. Now I know what you're thinking. Who is this guy? Is he the real deal? Will he help get my buys and tries looking right? Well, lucky for you, I got a chance to sit down and chat with him. Logan, man. Good to see you. Good to see you, all right. First things first here on the show. We like to uh, get sanitized. Absolutely. You gotta stay safe. Thank you. Appreciate that. So, Logan, tell me a little about yourself. Yeah, so I'm a Northern Kentucky kid. I grew up in Fort Thomas, made it out, and went to Newport Central Catholic. Graduated in 2015 from there. And then I went on to play football at Thomas More, and I finished my degree in kinesiology from NKU. Interesting. So, tell me how you got started at Beachwood. Yeah, so after I graduated from NKU, I went ahead and took a job being a strength and conditioning coach for the UC football program at the University of Cincinnati. That's why I'm wearing the shirt. After I got a feel for what life was like in college sports, I knew that I didn't want to be a part of that because eventually down the line I wanted to end up being a family man and always being around my family. I happened to get placed here, and then everything after everything with COVID happened, Ignition decided to cut their partnerships with all their high schools. And luckily, I built a good enough relationship with Mr. Booth, Mr. Brandon Slusher, our great athletic trainer, and our awesome principal, Mr. Kaiser, that once all that happened, they actually extended the job offer to me to stay on as the school strength and conditioning coach. And that's how I got here today. So you're full-time now? I am full-time, yes. So if someone were to want to get into the gym, you know, get their physique looking right, how would they get a hold of you? Yeah, so probably the best thing that you could do is honestly reach me on my Beachwood email. So, how did you get started in the fitness industry? You know, honestly, probably my grandfather probably introduced it to me at a young age. He, so you've been doing it your whole life? I guess you could say that, yes. Okay, that explains this. And this is what? There, there is a saying that says, lifting weights at a young age stunts your growth. Oh. Yeah, that old folk tale. So, as you can see, I, I'm wearing a blazer because, well, I'm a little insecure about my arm size. Do you think you could get my buys and tries looking right? And how old are you, Trevor? I am a sophomore. We're a couple years too late, pal. I keep wearing that blazer. Do you think you could take me in an arm wrestling match then? With both hands tied behind my back. <laughs> Let me list a few names of some people and you tell me whether or not you think you can take them in an arm wrestling match. Absolutely. Coach Rash. No doubt. Larry the Lobster from the hit TV show Spongebob. That would be a tough matchup, but I think on a good day I would have him. Oprah. Whew. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Logan, I think this has been a really productive interview. I think we learned a lot about you today. But one last question that people want to know. Who'd you vote for? You know, I had to vote.